I have received quite a few messages from developers wanting to learn machine learning and struggling a bit in knowing where to start, what to focus on. So in today's video, I will show you uh, my biased take on what I think uh, is the best way to, to do so, um, given some amount of prior programming knowledge. So I will first outline the landscape of machine learning with the company needed to have a good grasp. Uh, then I'll go into uh, the thing I think is, is good, the most efficient path. Um, we'll look at the perk of taking that path. And finally, um, I'll show you like a, a, a detailed plan of what I think uh, someone who want to start uh, should do. So this is my bias take. So if you have a counter argument or whatever, you can post them in the comment section. We can have a discussion about this. Okay, so um, I did a quick um, catch of, of the landscape of machine learning. Uh, this is not e exhaustive. Uh, it's really like a, a high level bird eye views of uh, what there is. Um, and I, I believe there's a hierarchy of stuff, right? So you, you cannot just start creating a machine learning uh, app or, or pipeline or AI, whatever. Uh, you need to, to know a bunch of stuff before you even start this, right? So like how does an neural network work, um, stuff like that. Um, so if you if we go from the top, you, you have like the train algorithm in the real world setting, and then you, you've made those or you know about those and then they just work, let's say facial recognition is just something that, that exists, right? Um, and then those are built upon uh, application tools. So like you have a programming language behind all of this, and then you have library and pick packages that are used to make that thing. Um, and I put those two in the same level. Um, then you have some higher level, like ML concepts, so like classification. Is this a classification task? Is, is this a classification task or a regression task? Um, is there some clustering happening? Are we doing dimensional reduction? Um, like this is just a sample of the stuff that uh, that uh, are at the the end. Uh, but usually you have like machine learning to get to that um, those points. Um, then there are low level concepts that are used uh, to get to the high level concept. Cross validation, boosting, ensemble method, correlation analysis, quantization, um, model capacity, uh, overfitting, underfitting, all of those uh, things work together to, 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 um, to get to uh, the, the, the classification or the regression or, or whatever higher concept that you want to get to. And you have to have a solid grasp onto those things in order to do the, your job well um, for your classification test, let's say. And there's a way more, like I put like nine, but there's like a hundred stuff that you, you need to know and it, it just keep increasing, right? Uh, so for instance, uh, what is dropout, uh, grade, like the, the type of stochastic gradient descent that you can do, the optimization, what the, the optimizer that you can um, have, there's a lot of stuff, right? And those things are based on the, the math theory, which is uh, like a lot of optimization, a lot of linear algebra. There's, uh, for some model, a lot of Bayesian statistic, and there's frequent statistic and probability that comes into play. Um, so there's a lot of stuff. So for, I think I would say that this is the, like the, the, the ground level um, that uh, everything is built upon. Uh, if you have a solid grasp onto those things, um, it's easier to understand uh, everything else. Um, so this is what it look like, right? And what you want to do is um, the blue stuff, right? You want to, like when I say blue stuff, this thing, you want to be able to create cool machine learning stuff, um, whatever it is. Like I want to, to write a new type of ML. I want to apply ML to this thing. I want to do be able to do ML if you're if you're a student, um, and the usual path that people um, says is that you should get a good foundation on those things. And if you go to university, usually that's that's what the, it's expected, right? You 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 uh, if you have a specialization in ML, you're gonna do a lot of these. Uh, you're gonna uh, understand these stuff. You're gonna be able to do those things. Uh, usually linear model, you you learn them a lot, and then you learn about um, uh, non-linear model and other st type of, of model and then uh, there's programming and um, you, you learn a bit about the high-level package at some point right maybe you learn one of them and then you you reuse it them let's say uh, in my case we learn MATLAB and we're using like whatever MATLAB had to offer 
and then we were able to do a train algorithm uh, by playing with all of these, right? Um, that's what is uh, usually um, the path that people um, say to take. Um, I, I would say it's the uh, it's not the most efficient path to to actually do the thing. Um, and uh, this is from experience. This is from uh, trying to teach um, ML to people. Look like watching people um, struggle in university and uh, um, when they take this kind of specialization and just feel completely lost um, and discouraged. Um, and it's because it's slow and it's not rewarding. Right? That's the I think I would say it's the only reason. Um, like when when you you you, you learn something, uh, you have an objective in mind. Uh, and it's hard to have this objective in mind when you have like little knowledge about this and you're struggling with linear algebra, right? Um, so you're struggling with that thing, you don't know why, where it fit in that and um, it's just painful and at some point you're like, I'm not made for this, I cannot understand linear algebra so how will I be able to understand like cross-validation, how will I be able to actually code the thing and do the stuff? Um, what I would say is the best and most efficient path is actually to go um, completely in reverse, right? You start from the top um, and you go straight to the, the blue stuff um, and you're going to suck at it, right? That's, that's the, I would say that's the best, um, uh, the best methodology. Uh, if you want to do ML, you do ML. If you want to do deep learning, you do deep learning directly, right? And you will not understand a thing. And this is good. It's it's actually really fun. I was reading this blog post um, a while ago uh, that I found on, on Acre News, um, and, and they said that to um, the most efficient way to learn something is like actually do the stuff, right? Uh, there's a tendency for people to try to take the high, the longest route, right? So I want to learn French, so I'm gonna do like those Duolingo uh, exercise. I'm gonna um, do some one-on-ones with uh, uh, someone online. I'm gonna read a book uh, uh, two times a week. Um, while what you could do is go straight to a place where they speak French and just get lost there, right? Um, it, it's also echo something that I've I've I've, um, I've uh, learned from um, the guy that wrote uh, Ultra Learning, and uh, this guy is a total beast. Uh, one thing he did was um, he learned a language in like a short amount of time and. He didn't know prior the language at all and what he did was just to go straight in that country and just get there and just study it right and he had no choice and he got lost and then he struggled a bit and then he was able to overcome that um, and I think this is this is the path to to actually learn machine learning efficiently or whatever actually um, is to to struggle with it and 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 it need to feel that you're lost, but you're actually doing the thing, right? Instead of, of trying to like understand everything over here before moving to the next step and then moving the next step, it's okay to not understand everything one shot, right? If you, if you, if you, you, there, there's parts that are still blurry for you, perfect, just note them down and then you're gonna go uh, find them afterward and then they will look less blurry, but you're, you're actually. Um, uh, getting fed through uh, the, the your success in the environment that you actually want to to uh, to take part on. So what I would say is go there, find a bunch of stuff uh, like easy to use algorithm online, uh, play with them. Uh, for instance, uh, there's many websites that are implementing, let's say, um, uh, some computer vision thing. Just play around with them and try to understand how they work. If you can get some, uh, let's say, already trained model, just Play with them, and if you already know how to code, let's say a website, take a trained model and try to implement it as a as an API in your application, and then just mess around with the thing, uh, and then you're gonna understand the limitation, let's say from deep learning uh, model, um, you can see where they have biases, you can understand a bit where the data come from, um, and understand like why they behave in a certain way. Um, but you will only understand it at like a, a, a high a high level. You will not understand anything because uh, you won't. You will not understand much because you don't have all of this inside your head, um, and you don't even know about it. I would assume. But at, at this point, you kind of know what uh, whatever type of ML you want to do uh, is, right? 
And then what I would say is move down and go to the application, right? Directly learn the programming language I was used to make this thing, for instance, Python, just learn Python properly, right? And then learn the library that were, they were used to make that thing, right? So sklearn, PyTorch, TensorFlow, whatever, go straight to the tutorials over there and then just try to implement uh, at a high level um, some sort of, of, uh, of machine learning thing and just look at the tutorial and get lost into it. And you will see they will do some weird things. Um, they will do cross-validation. You have no idea what it is. Um, they are talking about classification. They're talking about regression to get to like, let's say, recognizing a face or whatever. Um, and you will not necessarily get it, but you, you understand like kind of the structure of it. And it's, it's totally fine to not fully understand something, right? This is, this is okay. But the thing is now you actually know a bit how this is done. You know that uh, in your head, there's like a boundary. They, they're using scikit-learn to make this thing. They're using PyTorch. Okay, perfect. I know that they're not using like some weird, uh, uh, like cryptic thing that I will never be able to understand. You know that this is, this is how they used it, right? So it, in, in your head, what happened is that you limit um, the amount of knowledge that you need to know. If you start from the bottom, right, and you go there, um, let's say from uh, from the, this this part, uh, and you learn it, and then you try to think about ML, there's no boundary about the knowledge. You have no idea how far it goes, so it looks really scary. Well, if you go straight here, you know how it's where it ends. It ends with those concepts that they're using um, to make that thing. Let's say you, you look at the deep neural network, they're using uh, whatever, uh, Nesterov, uh, accelerated gradient, uh, they're using dropout in there, and they have a sigmoid function, whatever. And then this, this is how much neuron there is in this, this classifier, and you have no idea what it is. There's something called convolution, no idea. But at least you can like make a bullet point of everything in there, and then you kind of know, if I understand those things properly, I understand this piece of code, so then I could I could actually like uh, get what this thing is doing, right? You 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 limited the amount of knowledge you, you need to know. Um, and at this point, this is what I would do. I would take a bullet point and try to understand the concept. So it, it's like you're at the high level, and then you dig down just a bit, get the knowledge that you need, and you move back up. So there's going to be some holes in your your learnings, um, and you will be uh, uh, it, it will be like a uh, a breadth first uh, and then some depth uh, that are strategically planned. Um, so you will go down to this thing, let's say it's a classification, good. You just go there straight to classification and you forgot about those three things and then you just go there. Oh, now I understand what classification means. Perfect, good, I, I got it. Um, but it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit high level, but I get it. And then uh, they're using cross-validation, good. So you go there and then you go straight to cross-validation you understood what he, what happened and then you just move back up, right? Um, and this is what I, I would say is the best thing to, to do. Um, instead of going from the, the, uh, the bottom to the top, you go from the top to the bottom. All right, so I just finished rambling. Uh, so I presented the most efficient path, which is top down um, compared to, to bottom up. Um, let's look at the perk of that and like what um, why this top-down approach is better than the bottom-up um, is that the first first one is that most tech won't, won't require deep knowledge. Um, it's it's useful and in some cases uh, critical, but most of the tasks for most of the problem um, are you don't really need to go deeply inside of it to to understand it. Um, it, it you can have surface uh, amount of knowledge and be be fine. Um, does that mean that you should not learn uh, deeper uh, about some of the uh, uh, component? No, but it means that if you, you don't need to start from the bottom to actually do the thing, right? Second point is that people learn best when there's a clear feedback from the environment. So um, if you learn something just because someone told you that this is based on that, um, if there's no feedback for you. you. Let's say you master linear algebra, you, you understand it 100% well. You could do research on that, whatever, you can write theorem. Um, you still cannot do machine learning, right? Because you need all the components in order to get it. 
um, and be able to do it. So there's no feedback, even if you're like the master of it and you took two years of your life to learn it. So, well, if you go the other way and then you, you just kind of learn um, the, the tools without a clear understanding of why they work, uh, sometimes it's going to work, sometimes it's not going to work, right? Sometimes it's going to just, just, you overfit and nothing is working on your test set. Um, but it's fine, you get a feedback from your environment, the feedback is you suck, right? But good, but sometimes you, 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 will, you will succeed and that's a positive feedback and you have the, this positive and negative feedback that will push you to learning actually uh, better. So um, also, I, this is what I, uh, my personal opinion um, uh, with talking to people that want to learn ML and say something like, oh, you really need to learn uh, linear algebra, you need to like uh, really master that thing, uh, you need to learn probability really well, it's going to take me so long just to get started with that. I think it's like a coping mechanism because it looks scary for them, machine learning or whatever else. Um, and I think going by the longest route to get do, to doing ML um, is a way of avoiding learning ML because it's, it looks scary and difficult. Um, if you want to learn how to do the piano, just get on the piano and do it, right? And you will suck at it. And it's fine to suck at something until you uh, you, you reach some 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 amount of, of, of uh, confidence into your your skill set, right? But you need to know you suck before you get better. If you just like try to do some convoluted ways of, of learning like the background until you get to the doing the thing just to avoid of, of not understanding. Um, it might just be a way of, of like uh, avoiding learning a thing. Uh, the, I think the forward point is the, the, the most important thing. If you start from the top, it doesn't refrain you from learning the basics. You can, you can like go straight to the top, suck at the thing, and then um, decide to take like one month to learn linear algebra and then go back up. Um, it's, it's not like one or the other, um, but at least you know what you need to, un to understand. And while you're doing the bottom stuff, uh, you actually have a, a pretty good idea of where it fit, right? Uh, for instance, uh, linear algebra, let's say, do you try to read a deep learning book and you don't understand anything because of the notation? Well, uh, you, you learn a bit and then you're like, I don't get it. You go and take a course on linear algebra and it's it's more basic stuff, but at least you get it. And then while you're doing the exercise, you know you're gonna need that to read the deep learning book. And it's fine, now you, you, you have context. So the learning will be easier for you. That's it, that's all I had to say about it. I think um, this, this is my biased opinion. It comes from experience. Um, seeing a lot of people just struggle with it and then the people that, that actually like go and, and, and learn the thing easily uh, is the people that start from the top, not the bottom. Um, so now I'm just going to present you a plan of, of uh, a learning plan from someone that has no at all experience of ML. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at it. So that's a plan. Um, it's like a, it's a draft. Uh, so what the first step I would say is just look at the cool stuff and get hyped about the thing. Not hype in like a superficial level, a superficial level. Get hyped about the technology, right? So a oh, cool deep learning, convolutional neural network, uh, reinforcement learning is nice. Uh, there are some uh, generative model, whatever. Get hype about the thing and pinpoint what you like, right? Then um, I would say learn Python enough to be comfortable. Yes, you can learn MATLAB. Yes, you can learn R. I would say Python is the easiest because it has the biggest ecosystem. But just learn that thing uh, so that you know how to use it. After that, I would say learn SQLearn, right? And you won't understand anything, mostly. You're just going to be like, OK, cool, it's a Python package, nice. Um, but learn about it, right? And look at the tutorial. And worst case, just copy and paste them and just mess around with it. Um, but at least you know how, like, the, what, what, uh, there's a fit, there's a transform, um, there's, uh, there's all of those packages I can, I can import, perfect, I can uh, put a boundary on the, what I need to learn. Um, and you're going to see as you learn, they, in the tutorial they use a lot of pandas and numpy packages, learn this afterward, just to be enough to be comfortable, um, 
and go through the tutorial and, like poor scale just copy and paste it and then you're gonna see enough of it to to know where it stopped at this point try to pick a cool project that you you've seen, seen over there and just try to do it nail it right just just do it and uh, what will happen is it will suck it will most, most likely won't work it will be a mess um, but you've done a project and so you you start from data and you go to the end right and the end is not great you overfit your thing is barely usable the code is disgusting but you did a project that's great now what you should do is dive into the basic with sklearn so there's a great book um, machine learning with sklearn look at the description of the video for uh, all the, the reference um, learn, read that book right and it's uh, it's gonna take you from um, the start to the finish and you're gonna have everything you need to be better at sklearn and actually understand what's happening um, so by having this 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 knowledge over here uh, you you will you will be uh, able to understand why this thing sucked and what you should uh, be doing in the future uh, then I will say take Andrew NG uh, Coursera um, class it's great um, I think it's MATLAB though uh, no Octave uh, but I think there's um, there's a Python uh, version of it take that course right and you will see it will show you a bunch of stuff you will uh, you will have a good sense because you you went through this um, but some things you won't understand because there's some math part it's fine if you don't understand it good but at least you know where to put the boundary now you have a bit more context this is where you pick another cool project and you nail it and you will see if you go through those things those those learning right which you won't be discouraged because you know why you 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 want to 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 be better at, at those things because you already make a made a project and it sucked right so you got better and then you make another cool project and it will suck a bit less, right? You will understand your shortcoming over here. Uh, you you will do something that is a bit more usable. It will still suck, but just a, a bit less than before. This is where I would say um, pick PyTorch or TensorFlow. Deep learning is, is, is becoming such a, an important tool for the cool project that you should actually like kind of understand it. So pick those one of those two, I would say PyTorch. Uh, you can also take Keras or um, the thing from Amazon, MX something. Um, but just pick one framework and just mess around with it um, in using the tutorial section and you just copy and paste the code on the, on the Google Collab stuff um, and you won't understand much. I would say you, you will understand absolutely nothing except that there are neuron and that uh, there's some layer stuff going on. Um, but it's fine, at least you have context about what the code should look like, right? And then you pick another cool project and then you try to nail it, right? Um, there are, the, like, you don't need to make a deep learning project, but just to have this, this information in mind, um, then at this point, it should be kind of decent. Uh, you, you, you have enough background knowledge um, to actually make something just by reusing other people's idea, reusing other people's um, code bit um, you will you will get to do something nice uh, after that I would say get the deep learning with PyTorch book uh, or something similar for your your uh, framework and go through the exercise go through the whole thing it's a this one is a project based thing uh, so just play around with it and um, you will you will get uh, uh, a bit better um, I'd say I say deep learning is important because the model are so finicky uh, and so hard to work with that if you're able to understand how to work with that uh, going to a, a model with lower capacity like a, um, like a linear model is just a breeze it's easy right if you if you can understand why those things are finicky um, and that you need uh, so much data then it's easier to go back into an easier project once you're done with this it's not a too uh, difficult to, to read book it's really enjoyable uh, try to read the deep learning book it's huge right uh, there's a lot of concept you might need to take some break at some point to 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 get through it um, but try to to go to the deep learning book um, and, um, and and and, and kind of get an idea of, of the all the terminology that there is uh, in that um, in that sense uh, so that will put a nice boundary about uh, you what you you actually need to be good at this and this is where you pick another project and you nail it so this at this point here, 
if you did go through the whole thing, you have something solid, right? You have something that you're proud of, um, but you, you might not want to show it to people, but you, you kind of understand the flow of it and you, 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 you have a lot of experience. Um, once you're done with this, I would say go to read the statistical learning uh, book. Um, I put it in the description. It's like a Bible uh, for machine learning. Read it, right? Um, and at this point, you will be better at those uh, lower level, uh, lower capacity uh, model. Um, you should be, you should be uh, have, a, have a great knowledge about this stuff. You might still not be good at, at probability. You might not still be good at linear algebra. Uh, but you have a good idea of how to make machine learning work um, with the, 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 the state of the field. And this is where you pick another project and you nail it down. This one you should be really proud because you actually know a lot. You, you might know more actually than some people that are currently working in ML-based role or data science. Um, and still you haven't touched math that much. Um, and at this point, after this project, you drill as much math as possible in Khan Academy or something similar. I really like Khan Academy because there's a lot of exercise. Um, but you just drill it as much as possible uh, just to get that, that foundation and um, to, to really solidify the whole thing. And at this, this point on, you're good to go. Uh, just, just do whatever you want. Um, you learn ML. I would say that's it. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you have feedback, uh, comment, just please leave them in the comment section. If you disagree, I want to hear you out. Um, and I want to hear about your experience too. Um, and like always, have a great week.